Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I've decided that it's about time we finish this Minmus 4 rally. We have the probe in orbit around Minmus and we need to transfer it to Duna and Ike. And our Duna window is after 162 days so we're wasting some time. But let's just get to it so that we have the money to finally upgrade the R&D building. And then we will be able to unlock more technologies. I've reduced the frequency of the coronal mass ejections, but that doesn't mean they don't happen. And actually this will be an interesting way to tell how often they're going to happen. Still pretty often, apparently. Yeah, there are still a lot of coronal mass ejections. And stuff failing on probes. We've seen some complete reaction wheel failures, some solar panel failures. Not on the mission that we're concerned with, though. Okay, well, we're within a day of the transfer window. Let's hop to it and see what we can do. We've got a whole lot of coronal mass ejections still. I might have to turn off notifications on that, but I'm nervous about doing that because if I turn it off, I might forget to turn it on again when we have a crewed mission. And that would not be good because there's still a bundle. It always shows the engine firing when we transition to it, but it is not firing. And we need to recharge, apparently. That uh, took away our charge for some reason. First thing we need to do is break Minmus orbit. But uh, it's sort of in the wrong direction. We wanted to go that way. This way is lower, but our periapsis is better positioned to boost up to Duna like this. Three days doesn't seem too bad. Apoapsis on the preferable side. I guess we'll try it. Another coronal mass ejection and calm stuff. Is it effect is the coronal mass ejection causing us not to have comms? Because we can uh, we have a line of sight to Kerbin right now. So I don't know why we can't communicate to Kerbin. I mean, we better have the range, otherwise we're not communicating from Duna either. Well, here we have comms. It is direct, I believe. Yeah, it is direct comms. Maybe it's just the ground stations aren't doing anything? I don't know. Okay, well, we'll try and break orbit here. I don't know what result that will have, but I don't want to take any more chances. Okay, we are on departure. Well, I don't want a full 25 day orbit out of this. We better be able to exit before then, but it's not going to be soon, it doesn't look like. By the way, I tried to replace MechJeb, speaking of things that aren't working. Tried to replace MechJeb, but MechJeb wasn't interested in working anyway. Well, there's an encounter. We could probably do a minor adjustment to make it better, but there's an encounter, so let's hope. 17 days. I'll have to go to the tracking station to time warp. Okay, I was trying to adjust this a little bit. Um, but let's just go. We, we are at the burn time. Okay, quickly, quickly. We just need to fly by Duna and Ike. Ooh. No specified altitudes or anything like that. Just fly by Duna and Ike. And that's that for that stage. And then the ants. All important ants. We do have our experiments running still. They're just waiting for something to do. Okay, well that's pretty good. Indeed, we have our encounter. We could probably manage something a little bit closer. We'll plan a mid-course adjustment, but uh, yeah, well, let's make one at that ascending node. It makes sense. And hopefully we'll have comms. That's important, and that's the struggle. 
I would really like to set up the encounter with Ike as well right away. Well, that's looking pretty good, isn't it? There we go. That's not bad at all. We've got a uh, Ike Periapsis and Duna Periapsis about the same height. We could sacrifice the Duna one for a closer Ike one. But I feel like a balanced approach is good. We'll try that. 148 days. Okay, so while it's on its way, of course, we should point at the sun. And all right. Well, now I should probably turn off the mentions of all the storms, but I'll have to go through all the probes to do that. But to the tracking station, we will time warp the 78 days till that mid course maneuver. Okay, I'm going through and making sure that nothing is going to inform us about the space weather or their batteries. Okay, well, we are here at the mid-course adjustment. We have 77% signal strength, so not perfect. We are uh, pretty far away from Kerbin, but Kerbin's going a lot faster. So we do have to worry about it. Fortunately, we are hoping that this particular burn will set up our flybys. And the mission requirement didn't say anything about transmitting science during the flybys. So it should be enough. Okay, go. All right, point one off. What does that give us? I want okay, okay. That's about balanced between the two. I just wanted it like that. All right, we will rotate to face the sun again. Oh, we're already pretty good on that. All right, so I will go back to the tracking station and continue time warping. Well, we have a red line back, it looks like, for both the stuff around Mars and our mission, but still a line back for now. Okay, so Duna, I mean Mars, Duna, I meant Duna. Oh, oh, okay, 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 let's go to it. Okay, well, it's recharging again because it never seems to count the RTGs when we're not paying attention. 9% signal strength. Well, it should be enough. We have our Ike encounter. Let's see. Let's get the contract up. All right, we completed the Minmus 4 rally. We're swinging by Ike here. We'll capture around Duna. We could capture around Ike. That might be, might have been a more interesting thing to do actually, but for now we'll capture around Duna. Okay. A little bit high, but should be okay. Oh, one of the solar panels uh, is indicating red. I guess it's busted. Might be just the antenna on it, I'm not sure. I missed that message. And one of these antennas is yellow. Malfunction. Data transmitter. Oh, solar panel was a critical failure. Ah, huh. that was... Thought I was paying attention, but apparently not. A little bit high to capture. Sort of awkward. Not efficient. It'll be enough, but I probably should have tried to capture lower. After all. And our inclination isn't great for Ike either. I don't think we're going to get this over to Ike. We'll just leave it be though. It'll continue to do what science it can. It is running the micrometeoroid impact data. And let's see. Magnetometer doesn't have storage space, but eventually that'll be fine. I guess we'll uh, transmit that eventually. Well, apparently not right now. Not enough space for the hard on the hard drive. Okay, well, uh, to the sun for now. And eventually it'll transmit stuff. 
so we will get some more science from Duna, but for now it's probably going at a really low rate. 0.1 bytes per second, yes, but it's transmitted 217 credits so far, so you know, seems pretty good to me. Alright, but the main thing was the money, let's go back to the Space Center. Okay, so here we are with 1.6 million, and I will spend the 902,000 in order to upgrade the R&D building. And we have some science to work with here. I am somewhat tempted to see if space planes actually work in JNSQ. And we do have the ability to unlock the Mark II parts here. And that's a whole bunch of experimentation that's probably going to be costly though. <laughs> Uh, we don't really have, uh, well, we do have a small cargo bay, so, I mean, if there was a small sat contract, and, I mean, I'm just curious whether it's going to come back down safely. We've had some weird issues with the heating, haven't we? So, yeah, it's a question, but that'll take about all our science because we'll need the wing parts from here as well. So that's, and of course, we might as well just pick up the aviation and aerodynamics fill out that bit because we're up to that tier and i don't know if we want to go with the fuel systems yet precision propulsion oh yes the delta three <laughs> um just what i needed oh that's an interesting cryogenic engine but cryogenics I, i'm still not oh there's a uh, our um, RL10B2 right there, correct ISP and everything. But yeah, I don't know about using them for long trips. That's a nice ISP though. This engine has an even better ISP than the RL10B2. So a 400 expansion ratio, crazy stuff. But actually, another option was to get the science lab. And the science lab is here, the mobile processing lab. And the reason we might want that is because we can start doing the station contracts. Launch a new space station requires that we either have a science lab or a laboratory. And that's the only thing we don't have met here. So, I mean, the space plane is a stretch. I think we should try to get the science lab and unlock that whole business about bases and stations and see if we can do that sort of thing. Seems like a more lucrative venture short term. So I'll unlock this and we'll get the science lab. And we will see if we can get that contract. We might have already had the laboratory thing if we had just picked up this orbital laboratory, but I do like the stock science lab. Okay, so let's see what the contract would give us and whether it's worthwhile. It's not giving it to me. It says met on the laboratory. And it says met must meet, but why target body must not be the sun unmet? Why is it unmet here? I don't understand that one. It was met just a second ago. Um, and who said anything about target by being the sun? Uh, it says launch a new space station. That's the whole point of that. Okay, let's see if maybe there's something in some other category. Rough landing on Ike. But it has to be a special probe. Oh, okay, okay, it unlocked it. All right, all right. Uh, I I guess I just had to scroll to other things. I don't know why. Um, all right, we've we've got unlocked. Kerbin Space Station, Moon Space Station, and Eve Space Station. Let's try Kerbin first. Seems reasonable. Uh, support four Kerbals. And power. We don't necessarily need the cupola. We do need docking ports. Okay, let's pick that up. We do not have the full Clampatron docking port. We just have the Junior for now. So, 
that's a bit of a rub, but we'll run with it. Now my normal pattern in stock was to just have the entire body of the rocket be the space station. And we'll try and come close to that here. Okay, I've been building my station, but twice now it has just randomly disappeared. Well, there we go again. So, I've had this problem before. I don't remember why. And I don't like it. Um, I do have window shine that also seems to be shining the entirety of the parts ex instead of just the windows. Um, no, it's still disappearing. I think maybe if I try and move it with the science lab is the problem. If there's another part and I click and move it, it's all right. That's my working theory here. Let's see, we've got that. Okay, it doesn't disappear. And then I move it with that, it disappears. Okay, it's the science lab, or maybe it's just anything with window shine on it that causes a problem. Okay, we will keep that in mind. <laughs> So this is highly irregular, and I don't like it. I'm wondering if we can just launch a body like this and have it be a depot as well. Just all at one go. Maybe add some boosters, but... Well, that's practically to orbit right there. Well, we've got a lot of solar panels, but not the regular ones. Medium size doesn't sound too bad. This one's fixed. This one's tracking. And powerful. Okay, that should probably do it. Probably. Got bobcats. We've got some antennae. Uh, taking a look at the requirements. Below 800 kilometers, that's fine. We have a docking node. We should have some more docking nodes. Eventually, we'll just have an engineer replace the top one. And so in order to do that, we should make a different part, the root part. That way, the engineer can take that off and put the regular docking port on. We'll block this window. It's just the best place for a docking port right now. We've got plenty of supplies on board. We're making good use of our mass cap. We put some RCS propellant on. Just a little bit. And we'll put some thrusters. We only have a tiny reaction wheel on here, and I do wonder about adding a bigger one, but well, we have a small one there. I guess we'll add that too, because our crew modules here don't have one. I wanted to add a recycler unit. I'm going to have two banks of sold panels, just in case we have a failure. Really expensive though. External ECLSS module. Have two of them. And let's make sure that the Hitchhiker storage container has the basics though. Scrubber and pressure control. Discover pressure control. Okay, what I want is a recycler. Water recycler. Waste processor. I don't know if that helps anything. Extract ammonia. I don't think I need that. We'll just have a bonus scrubber on this side and a bonus pressure control on this side just in case. So we'll have two water recyclers. Okay, that's a lot of stuff. Let's launch it to Kerbin Orbit. Okay, well, is it satisfied? 
support for Kerbals. It says the cupola is optional, so we're going to trust that. <laughs> Otherwise, this is not enough. Let's go ahead and wait till daylight to launch. Okay. All right. Well, it's a thing. Here you go. SAS on. All up. Ignition. And launch. Lots of get up and go here. Look at all the nitrogen. We could EVA for days. No shielding though, but it's the low Earth orbit station. We'll have to put some on the our little Kerbin orbit station, jeez. We'll have to put more on the other stations. Okay, separation of boosters. I'm gonna go as flat as possible at this point. Okay, fairing separation. Probably thrall down a bit. It didn't have a minimum on the altitude, so we just have to be in space. It's getting a little bit tight here. Come on, station. Uh. No! I underestimated. I didn't have enough. I should have launched more horizontally. This is gonna be a waste. I can't RCS this into orbit. No, we don't really. We really don't have any extra. Too much supplies. Well, this is disappointing. I think I'll wrap up the episode with the explosion of this. Um, well, a little bit of a waste, but. Um, yeah, I was too optimistic on the Delta V there. We'll have to put more boosters? Or maybe we should just undersupply it temporarily before it comes back down. Some more electric charge might be good too. Well, this was expensive. Well, maybe it will be instructive as far as heat tolerances are concerned. Well, the tanks aren't great. And explosions. Oh, 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 it just took everything away. Okay, all right then. There's nothing in view. Okay, well, we'll definitely start off by launching a new space station next time, which will be improved. And yeah. Yeah, we will proceed to launch other space stations elsewhere. And then we'll see what we can do from there because there's a whole associated set of contracts for the stations. They'll have crew rotations and all that business and we'll see how it goes. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I will see you next time.